Hello everyone, I am doing this 5 part mini series on my channel where I discuss how I would plan out the MCU if we lived in an alternate universe where Marvel Studios never lost any of the film rights to their characters and still retained all of them. Hell, maybe in this timeline they are still bought out by Disney, who knows. Anyway, let's say in this alternate universe I was the head producer of the MCU instead of Kevin Feige and I planned out the whole, the whole saga. How would it go? Well, let's start off with phase one. Up first, we have The Amazing Spider-Man, which would release in June 2008. This film would probably still be an origin story, it would have Peter be at 17 years old and in his high school senior year. He would also be an intern at Oscorp Laboratories with his love interest Gwen Stacy, who will be Peter's first love before Mary Jane until I eventually kill her off. Because I'm a sick bastard like that. The film establishes that Peter's parents were scientists at Oscorp before they died in a plane crash, and his father worked alongside Dr. Otto Octavius. This is really the only plot point I'll be taking from the Ultimate Comics, because moving, f because moving forward, I'm not really that big of, a, of the Ultimate Comics to begin with, so this is really the only plot point I'll be borrowing. Dr. Octopus would be the main villain of this movie, and I would have his motivations be just like that in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, with wanting to fulfill his dream of, bu of building a successful f fusion reactor. Peter gets bitten by the spider before the 10 minute mark, because while he is helping Otto with controlling the nuclear fusion reactor, a spider slowly webs down to the reactor and becomes radioactive, then bites Peter. But right after Peter gets bit, the nuclear fusion reactor goes haywire and causes an explosion which fuses Otto's mechanical arms to his body and fries the inhibitor chip just like in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. The rest of Peter's origin to becoming Spider-Man remains the same and I would still have the costume be more of a live-action version of John Romita Sr.'s uh, Spider-Man costume from the 70s and 80s. I would also have the film still have a big fight between Spider-Man and Doc Ock on the subway train, like in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, and still have Spider-Man stop it the same way. I'm, I'm going to change the, the fight's motive where instead of Peter going after Doc Ock because he kidnapped MJ, he instead chases Doc Ock because he stole more tritium for his fusion machine. Not only that, this time Doc Ock doesn't kidnap him after he stops the train and Peter has enough time to recover after the stopping the train takes a heavy toll on him. In this version, it is still going to end with Spider-Man stopping Doc Ock's fusion machine like in the end of Spider-Man 2, but instead of Harry telling him where, where Doc Ock is, uh, his location is found when Doc Ock's machine is drawing heavy power from the city's power grid and Spider-Man is able to track it, track it down. Long story short, Doc Ock loses, Spider-Man saves New York, but this time Doc Ock does not die, and instead he is imprisoned in the raft, and is saved for a future installment where he is a member of the Sinister Six. As for who I would cast to play Spider-Man, I would probably st still get Andrew Garfield, maybe Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, but I really want to see Mark Hamill play Doc Ock, he would be perfect for that role. Overall, that's really my pitch for the first Amazing Spider-Man movie for this phase. Moving on to the second film in the first phase is X-Men, which would be released in October 2008. The first X-Men film in this, in this series would have a similar plot to Bryan Singer's X-Men film from the year 2000, but the difference is that Kitty Pryde is being on the run instead of Rogue. Rogue's role in the 2000 X-Men film would just be replaced with Kitty Pryde. Beast would testify before Congress instead of Jean Grey in the beginning of the film because it would make more sense for someone who physically appears as a mutant to testify before Congress, if you ask me. Jean's character would just be like how she was in the 90s X-Men show with her being a concerning and loving sister figure who was always there to offer consolation for the X-Men and help them through hard times. Jean Grey and Cyclops would still be in a relationship and they would actually have good chemistry with each other unlike in Singer's original film where they barely had any. Logan helps out Kitty Pryde the same way he did Rogue in Singer's original film, and they are still both attacked by the Brotherhood of Mutants before the X-Men come in to save them. Senator Robert Kelly would not be kidnapped nor turn into a mutant in this version. The final fight in the Statue of Liberty would still remain the same, but Magneto does not kidnap Rogue to power it, since Rogue in this version would already be a member of the Brotherhood of Mutants. And in this film, she doesn't become a member of the X-Men until the second film. I don't know who for certain I would cast, but honestly, for a few members of the X-Men and the Brotherhood, I would say Tom Hardy as Wolverine, Terry O'Quinn as Professor Xavier, 
Liam Neeson as Magneto, Charlize Theron as Mystique, and Liev Schreiber as Sabretooth. And the rest I'll just leave it up to the casting directors. Overall, yeah, uh, there would be a lot of differences. And the reason that I decided to replace Kitty Pride's role with Rogue is because I didn't like how Brian Singer made Rogue into this helpless damsel. That's not who Rogue is, that's more of what Kitty Pride is. But yeah, that's enough changes for the X-Men film I would do for this, uh, for this franchise. Up next is Iron Man, which would be released in August of 2009 instead. The film would basically remain the same movie with all the same characters, villains, cast, etc., but with one difference. I would cast Jamie Foxx as Rhodey Rhodes and have him remain as War Machine for the MCU. That's really about as much as I can do for the film, so moving on to the next film in this phase. Next is The Amazing Spider-Man 2 which would be released in June of 2010, and I would have Electro and Vulture be the main villains. Kingpin would make his first debut in the MCU in this film, and he funds an experiment to Oscorp to turn Max Dillon into Electro and give him his powers. Kingpin would be played by Vincent D'Onofrio, and he would have the classic attire he did in the comics. So, I'm still having Vincent D'Onofrio play him because honestly, he's just irreplaceable as, as Kingpin at this point. Vulture would be the main villain in this film, and he would also work alongside uh, Electro to take Spider-Man down, and I would have uh, Vulture be played by Robert England. I would also have Electro be played by Aaron Paul. Spider-Man would find out that Kingpin hired and created Electro and also hired Vulture to take him down, and he confronts Kingpin about it, and Kingpin and him get into a small fight. Kind of similar to how uh, Spider-Man and L. Thompson Lincoln Tombstone in the Spectacular Spider-Man series had a small little scuffle. And then after Kingpin just pins Spider-Man to the ground, he then gives him this long monologue about the reality of life and the reality of crime and how he believes Spider-Man is just too young and pouty to understand, yada yada yada, you, you get the point. And then, Spider-Man then swings off into the sunset saying that he'll keep an eye on him from now on and the film ends. But wait, that's not all. The film would have a mid credit scene where, very similar to the first Spider-Man film directed by Sam Raimi, Norman Osborn would inject himself with the Goblin formula and he becomes the Green Goblin and kills Dr. Mendelstrom in the process, thus setting him up as the Green Goblin in the sequel. Up next is The Incredible Hulk, which would be released in October of 2010. It would pretty much be the same movie, but I would have Edward Norton be the main Bruce Banner and Hulk in the MCU moving forward, and not have him be replaced by anyone else. No offense to Mark Ruffalo, but Edward Norton nailed Bruce Banner's tormented side of the character perfectly from the comics. Up next is Ant-Man, released in April 2011 and it would have Hank Pym as Ant-Man and Janet Van Dyne as the Wasp as the main characters. The film would have Darren Cross from the comics as the main villain, but he would be rewritten to have his motivations be different so that he's not some one-dimensional corporate bad guy like, say, Justin Hammer or Aldrich Killian. Ultron would be in the movie as an artificial intelligence and robot who helps support Hank Pym like Jarvis does. There would be scenes foreshadowing him becoming a villain by talking to Hank Pym about how much humanity is flawed and how we suck as a species, I mean, you get the gist. As for who I would cast, well, I would cast John Krasinski and Emily Blunt as Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne. I know that people wanted both of them to play Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, but I actually think they would fit more as Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, personally. Up next is Iron Man 2, released in July 2011. The film would be rewritten entirely and go with the YouTube user Sean Chandler's rewrite of the film, which I highly recommend you guys watch, and I will leave a link to it in the description box. So all the changes I'll make to Iron Man 2 would just be what Sean rewrote for the film, since he came up with a lot of great ideas for the film, and I highly recommend you guys check out his video. Moving on to the next film, and it is X-Men 2 United, released in October 2011. Yes, I know the poster that I'm showing shows the original title, but I always found the title X2 X-Men United to be redundant since it's just repeating X-Men twice if you think about it. The film would basically have the same plot but with numerous changes. 
Nightcrawler would still be in the movie, and it would still begin with him attacking the White House like he did in the Bryan Singer film. Colossus would, would appear in the film, and he would be played by Alan Richson. He would appear in the first act of the film with him st stopping a bank robbery using his powers, and the X-Men would swoop in to help him out. Colossus would be just like how he was in the comics. He would be a pacifist who prefers to settle conflict through peaceful solutions, and only fights as a last resort. Alan Richson would obviously work on a good Russian accent for the role of Colossus, though. He and Kitty Pride would start to have a relationship in the movie, just like in the comics. William Stryker would be replaced with Dr. Killebrew. And Dr. Killebrew would just have the same role as Stryker did in the original X2 X-Men United. Lady Deathstrike would still be in it, but she would be a cyborg instead of a mutant, like how she was in the comics, because I hated how X2 ruined Deathstrike by not making her a cyborg. The film would explain that she and Logan had a past rivalry, and she hates him for taking her family's honor. And she wants to work alongside Killebrew to take the adamantium from his skeleton to honor her family's legacy and her father's legacy. Just like in the comics. Rogue near the end of the film realizes that working for the Brotherhood is not a good idea, and she defects to the X-Men in this film. This change in Rogue's character would obviously be earned, by the way. The ending of the movie would be different. The film would have Killebrew using Professor X and his Cerebro machine to kill all mutants, but Magneto intercepts and forces Charles to try and kill all the humans around the world instead using Cerebro. But the plan is foiled by Nightcrawler and Storm the same way. Jean Grey would not die in this film and instead dies in another X-Men film. And to be honest, that's really about as much changes as I'm going to do for X-Men United. Moving on. Up next, we have the Fantastic Four, which would be released in April 2012, and it would not be an origin story, and instead, it would do what the Incredible Hulk film did and just show the Fantastic Four's origin in an opening credit sequence. The main villain of this movie would actually be Annihilus from the Negative Zone. I'm not gonna have it be Doctor Doom, he's gonna be saved for a sequel. The film would have the Fantastic Four traveling to and exploring the Negative Zone, and they would encounter and try to take down Annihilus which they end up doing so, obviously, in the third act. The thing in this movie would be a CGI character, and uh, he would be about as tall and as big as the Hulk. And as far as who I would cast for the Fantastic Four, I would say James Ransom as Mr. Fantastic, Elizabeth Banks as, Inv as Invisible Woman, Lucas Till as Johnny Storm, and probably I would have Brendan Fraser be the thing. Up next, is The Amazing Spider-Man 3, which would be released in June 2012. I would have Sandman and Green Goblin be the main villains. I would even have Sandman's character be more like how he was in Spider-Man 3, but actually done correctly. I would have it that his daughter is dying from leukemia because they never specified her illness in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, and that he needs money desperately for her treatment because the United States healthcare system is absolute trash. He volunteers to be experimented on by Oscorp, and the experiment turns him into Sandman. Ah, the things that he does for money, am I right? Sandman originally is just going to be a thief who steals money just to help with his daughter's treatment, and only teams up with Green Goblin in the end of the film to take down Spider-Man because the Green Goblin forces, forces him to do so, otherwise he'll kill his daughter whom he kidnapped. I would have the scene where he forces him to join him be like the scene in Batman v Superman, where Lex Luthor shows Superman pictures of his kidnapped mother and threatens to kill her if Superman doesn't do his bidding. I would have Brian Cranston play the MCU Green Goblin, because to be honest, he's the only one other than Willem Dafoe who can act insane enough and over the top enough to pull it off, in my opinion. I would have Green Goblin's initial plan is to kill Wilson Fisk and become the new kingpin of crime, like, like in the spectacular Spider-Man TV series, but knows that Spider-Man will constantly get in the way, and in the end of the film, Norman figures out Peter is Spider-Man and kidnaps Gwen Stacy and kills her, like he did in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 121. The film would end with, P with Peter defeating Sandman and defeating Green Goblin and almost beats Green Goblin to a bloody pulp until he discovers that the Green Goblin is indeed Norman Osborn. Norman uses this opportunity to try and kill Peter with his glider and he jumps out of the way and then it impales him in the nuts instead. Peter would be so guilt-stricken by not being able to save Gwen and feeling responsible for her and Norman's death that he quits being Spider-Man in the end of the film. 
I would end this film in a dark way like an Empire Strikes Back, but of course Peter will, will return as the web slinger in the Avengers film which I have planned. Up next is Thor, which would be released in November of 2012, and it would have Loki as the main villain still. The film's plot would be overall the same, but with some differences. Loki still betrays Laufey and tries to use the Bifrost to destroy Jotunheim, but Thor stops him and makes, Th and makes Thor think that he dies by throwing himself into the void of space outside of Asgard, and seemingly dies but returns in the Avengers film in 2013 which I have planned. The Bifrost is not destroyed and is in fact still intact, but Thor has a conversation with Odin a day after Loki seemingly dies about how he has learned from his wrongdoings and how he has matured, yada yada yada. And uh, Odin casts another enchantment where he can use his hammer to shapeshift into Donald Blake, which was his human disguise on Earth in the comics. In the end, he returns to Earth and reunites with Jane, thus giving the film a, a way more somber ending than the original Thor film in 2011. Up next is Captain America the First Avenger, which would be released in March 2013. It would basically be the same movie, and Chris Evans would still play Captain America. However, I would cast Till Schweiger as the Red Skull instead of Hugo Weaving. I mean, no offense to Hugo Weaving, I just didn't really think he, he pulled off the Red Skull properly. And I do believe that Till Schweiger could pull it off better. Red Skull would not wear a human mask and would still be in his Red Skull form the entire film, and would only appear in his human form in flashbacks. The film would end with Red Skull firing a nuclear missile at America and Captain America intercepts the missile and causes it to crash in the North Pole and he would be frozen in ice for 68 years until he's found by Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. Red Skull would s instead escape and not seemingly die like he did in the original movie and returns for a later Captain America film. The Cosmic Cube slash the Tesseract and the Space Stone would not be in this movie either. And I would also have Wolverine have a cameo in this film where he fights alongside Captain America to storm Hydra's base. And yeah, he would only really have like a brief cameo, not, not much else. And honestly, that's about it for changes. I made no, no Space Stone, no other Infinity Stone, it would be in this film. Uh, the film would also have an end credit scene, which would have an official second trailer to the Avengers coming after this film. Because by the time this film comes out, there would have already been a teaser trailer for the Avengers uh, months before, so this film would have a second trailer in the end credits to hype the audience up. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. The Avengers, which would be released in May 2013. The members of the Avengers in this film would have a lineup that would include Spider-Man, Iron Man, Wolverine, Captain America, Thor, Ant-Man, Wasp, the Hulk, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and the Fantastic Four. The X-Men would still appear in this film, but not until the third act, where they help the Avengers fight against the Chitauri army. Black Widow's backstory in this film would be completely different. In my version, I would explain that she was born in the 1940s, well, the late 1940s, and she was raised and trained as a child to be an assassin and spy for the Soviet government. Black Widow explains that she was given an experimental form of the Super Soldier Serum by the Soviet Union, which they created using government intel stolen from the United States. And the serum that she was given not only prolonged her lifespan and made her age at only half the rate of an average human, but also gave her superhuman attributes. I would also have Wasp in this film be the one to come up with the name Avengers, because in the comics, she was the one that came up with that name, so it's a good homage at least. And the movie would still have a lighthearted tone, however, I would tone down the humor in this film because the problem I had with the humor in the first Avengers movie was that they went way too overboard with it that it took away from the seriousness of some scenes and sequences. Loki in this film would be way more intimidating and more menacing. He would still work for Thanos to take down Earth, however, I would have him be more akin to Steppenwolf from Justice League. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, no, 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 not that Steppenwolf, the other Steppenwolf that was actually intimidating and from the cut of Justice League that was actually good. Thank you, much better. He would be more akin to Steppenwolf in the sense that while he is still an underling, he is still very intimidating and a force to be reckoned with. I would still have a scene where the Avengers would fight against a brainwashed Hulk who was mind-controlled by Loki, and it would have, uh, have it happen in a metropolitan area in New York, and I would have it where Wolverine and Hulk would duke it out, and they would fight in a contest of wars. Ah! Ah! 
I would have Spider-Man return in this film and have Peter become Spider-Man again where he intervenes and helps the Avengers take down Hulk. The film would end in a final fight in New York with Loki and the Avengers, and I would have a scene very similar to the, f to the final battle in Avengers Endgame, where just when it seems that Captain America is overwhelmed by Loki and his Chitauri army, every one of the Avengers rallies up behind him, including the X-Men and Fantastic Four and so on, with the soundtrack Portals by Alan Silvestri playing in the background, with Captain America saying Avengers assemble right before they charge at Loki. And his Chitauri army... Uh, in this film, I mean, I would change their design a little bit to be more akin to uh, the, the Ultimate Comics design. I didn't really like the live-action design all that much, so I would change the design of the Chitauri army a bit. The film would end with a battered Loki using the Space Stone, and yes, the Space Stone is in this film. I would have Loki use the Space Stone to travel to another part of the universe to escape from the Avengers. The film would end similarly with news coverage of the public's reaction to the Avengers, and I would also end it with the same way Thor The Dark World ended with Thor visiting Odin, who, what, what appears to be Odin, but in fact turns out to be just Loki in disguise. And that's it, that's my pitch for an Avengers film for this phase. And last but not least, the final film in this phase is The Incredible Hulk 2, which would be released in October 2013. It would have Samuel Stearns, aka the leader, as the main villain, and the film would also include She-Hulk, aka Jennifer Walters, and this would be her first debut in the MCU. I would have She-Hulk be played by Aubrey Plaza, because that's the actress who I wanted to play before Tatiana Maslany was cast. And uh, not, not, not only that, I would also have this film establish that Hulk and Banner are split personalities, and throughout the movie, Hulk and Banner would argue and bicker inside Banner's mind about who should take over whose body. And in the end of the movie, they would let go of their differences and work uh, together alongside She-Hulk to defeat the leader. And that's my pitch for The Incredible Hulk 2. Up first in the beginning of Phase 2 was Black Panther, which would be released in February 2014. It would pretty much be the same movie as the 2018 film, but with a number of differences. Ulysses Claw would not appear in the film until a sequel. In the film, the first act would start with T'Challa's father, T'Chaka dying from a terminal illness, and T'Challa taking his place as King of Wakanda and the mantle of Black Panther. The film would still have Eric Killmonger as the main villain, and Killmonger would still be played by Michael B. Jordan. I would cast John David Washington as Black Panther instead. Not because Chadwick Boseman would still die or anything, but because Washington was who I originally wanted to play Black Panther before Boseman was cast. Anyways, that pretty much does it for how I would change this film and its place in the MCU. Moving on to the next film, which would be The Amazing Spider-Man 4, which would be released in June 2014. It would have the Lizard and Craven as the main villains, Dr. Connors would be played by Dylan Baker, and he would be a Wolfman type character where every time he transforms, he would be a mindless animal that would mindlessly attack and destroy everything in his path, kind of like the Wolfman would. He wouldn't have this ridiculous plan of wanting to turn everyone in New York into lizards because that's fucking stupid. Craven the Hunter would be a secondary villain and he is hired by Kingpin to kill Spider-Man for him and Kingpin promises Kraven that Spider-Man would be his most monumental hunt. Kraven initially wants to kill Spider-Man, but when he finds out about the lizard midway through the movie, he sets his eyes on the lizard instead. The conflict of the movie would be Peter trying to find a cure for Dr. Connors and simultaneously stopping Kraven from killing Lizard and turning him into a trophy. Peter would start dating Mary Jane Watson and they would both have excellent chemistry with each other. There would be a few scenes of them dating and Peter reveals to, to her that he is Spider-Man in the end of the film. Peter tries to tell MJ that they can't be together because if his enemies found out about his identity, then they would get to MJ to get through him and he wouldn't be able to forgive himself. MJ says she wouldn't care and she wants to take out the risks with Peter, and the film ends with a cute scene of both Peter and MJ swinging through New York. For who I would cast, I would say Craven would be played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and Mary Jane would be played by Madeline Petch. But wait, that's not all. There would be a mid credit scene in this film with Kingpin meeting Doc Ock in prison and asking him how he would feel working alongside others as a team, and thus setting up the next Spider-Man film with the Sinister Six. Up next is Iron Man 3, which would be released in August 2014 but actually be good. 
the film would have the real Mandarin as the main villain of the film, and he would be played by Donnie Yen. The Mandarin in this movie would have the Ten Rings that he wears from the comics, which would give him his powers, and he would also be the leader of the Ten Rings organization. The film could even point out the irony that the Mandarin technically helped create Iron Man since he was the one who kidnapped Tony. Not only that, I would have Rhodey return in this film, and I would have Pepper Potts wear her rescue armor from the comics, and even have her fight alongside Tony and Rhodes against the Mandarin. The film would not have Tony dealing with anxiety attacks, and would not have him dealing with PTSD from the Avengers film. Because what never made sense to me is how come Tony didn't develop PTSD earlier when he got kidnapped by the Ten Rings, but all of a sudden now develops PTSD from the final battle in New York. So yeah, I would change this film completely and actually have it be good, because anyone who knows me knows that I despise Shane Black's Iron Man 3. Now moving on to the next film is X-Men 3 Mutant Massacre. The film would be based off the Mutant Massacre storyline from the comics, and it would have Mr. Sinister as the main villain, with him being the leader of the Marauders. For this film, I would even introduce Juggernaut and have him be a member of the Marauders, just because Mr. Sinister promised him to take down Professor Xavier, who in this franchise is still Juggernaut's stepbrother like in the comics. I would even have Gambit appear in this film, but he would defect from the Marauders and Mr. Sinister in the, begin of the, the beginning of the film and defect to the X-Men. Gambit would leave the Marauders because in the beginning of the movie they would commit a mass slaughter and massacre on the Morlocks, which are a group of underground deformed mutants, and Gambit realizes that it was a bad idea joining them. This would be the exact reason he defected in the comics. Not only that, I would even have the film introduce the Sentinels and Bolivar Trask. The Sentinels in this movie would finally appear after the public sphere of mutants grows astronomically high after the events of X-Men 2. Not only that, the design of the Sentinels would be more akin to their design in the Days of Future Past film, but from the 1970s era. Jean Grey would die in this movie because she would sacrifice herself to save the X-Men and the Morlocks from drowning because in the end of the film, the Morlocks underground lair would start to flood because the destruction caused by the X-Men and the Marauders fighting each other. There would be a mid credit scene where it shows an outline of the Phoenix Force underwater in a river near New York City, so yeah, that would set up a future film with the Phoenix Force. That's pretty much my idea for a third X-Men film. It would be a Mutant Massacre adaptation with Sentinels added in for fan service and a mid-credit scene teasing the Phoenix Force in the next film. Up next is Captain America Serpent Society. The film would have Captain America trying to adjust to America in modern day like in the 2014 Winter Soldier film, and it would also have the Serpent Society as the main villains with the members being Sidewinder, King Cobra, Bushmaster, and Anaconda. The film would also introduce Falcon in this film, but he would be more akin to Falcon from the Ultimate Comics than the Falcon from the 616 universe. S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury would still play a role in this film, in helping take down the Serpent Society, and I would even have a mid credit scene in the film with Winter Soldier assassinating a politician and meeting with a group of Hydra leaders afterwards and reporting that the kill was a success, thus setting up a third Captain America movie with the Winter Soldier. Up next is Fantastic Four Doom. As the title suggests, Doctor Doom is the main villain, and for this film, he will be just like how he was in the comics, with him being the ruler of Latveria and having all the same powers and abilities like he did in the comics. I would also have Doom's backstory be just like in the comics, where he was born into a gypsy family, and him and his father ran away from Latveria to escape the wrath of the king, but his father ended up dying from hypothermia because of the extreme cold. I would also have Doom's mother, Cynthia Von Doom, be a witch, just like how she was in the comics, and have her make a deal with the demon Mephisto, and yes, I am doing Mephisto in this franchise, to give her strong supernatural powers. But Cynthia ends up dying because her powers went out of control. I would also have Doom be a sympathetic villain, and have his entire mission be to rescue his mother from the netherworld and from Mephisto's grasp, because that was actually one of Doctor Doom's main motives in the comics. As for who I would cast as Doctor Doom, I would have Doom be played by Sam Witwer. I would also have Mephisto be played by Willem Dafoe. I mean, come on, everybody agrees he would be perfect for that role. 
I would also have Doom blame Reed Richards for being disfigured because at one point uh, when Reed and Victor were friends, Victor tried to open a portal to Mephisto's realm but Reed botched it and it was so disastrous it disfigured Victor. That's pretty much how I would write a sequel for Fantastic Four. It would have Doctor Doom as the main villain, also include Mephisto and some elements of the Netherworld. And next is Guardians of the Galaxy. And it would pretty much be the same movie as the 2014 one, but with numerous differences. The first difference is that instead of Ronan the Accuser as the main villain, it would be Jason of Spartax, who in this timeline is Star-Lord's father. I would also have Adam Warlock appear in this film and have him be a member of the Guardians, and I would also have him contain the Soul Stone in his forehead. And I would have the Soul Stone be colored green instead of orange. The humor in this film would also be toned down a bit because, as much as I did enjoy the 2014 Guardians of the Galaxy film, the humor was way too overboard for my taste. That's really about as much rewrites as I can go for this film, so moving on to the next film in Phase 2. Next is Doctor Strange, which would be the same movie but also with a lot of differences. I would have Baron Mordo be the main villain of this film and still have him serving Dormammu, and not only that, I would change Dormammu's design so that he's more comic accurate and not some cartoonish floating head like in the 2016 film. I would have Stephen Strange go through an arc where he learns to be less selfish and use his abilities for the good of others instead of for himself, and basically give him the same character arc as Tony Stark had in the first Iron Man film. That's really about it for the rewrite. The problem I had with the original Doctor Strange film was that Steven came off as way too much of an asshole and there wasn't really enough of a, of a redemption arc that the film gave him, so in this film I would give him more of a redemption arc. Next is Ant-Man 2. This film comes out three months before Age of Ultron to truly hype up the audience for the next film for how much of a big of a threat Ultron will be. Not only that, I would have Ghost be the main villain of the movie and I would also introduce Goliath from the comics and he would be played by Aldous Hodge. I would have Ghost be dying from her powers like how Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, handled her character but I would still have her have a sad backstory like she did in that film. I would also have established that Goliath and Hank Pym go way back and I'm pretty sure that Krasinski and Hodge would be able to pull it off well because they're both great actors. There would be a mid credit scene in the movie where it teases that Ultron will become evil in the next Avengers installment and show him speed reading through different files of the Avengers. And of course, the big sequel, Avengers Age of Ultron. For this film, I'm going to be going with Bandit Incorporated's fanfiction right of the film. He did an excellent fanfic of it and had a lot of good ideas here, so I'm going to be borrowing some of them. However, here are the changes I would do from his fanfic. I would still have Thor be beaten to a pulp by Ultron and be transported to Niflheim by Loki, so that Loki can impersonate Thor and be the new king of Asgard while he's gone, since in Bandit's rewrite, Odin dies of natural causes and transfers his power to Loki. In Bandit's story, Ultron transports Hulk into the void of space to try and set up a Planet Hulk film, but I would not do that because I'm not interested in setting up a World War Hulk film anyways, so I would just have Hulk be beaten to a bloody pulp by Ultron, but Hulk eventually recovers and helps beat Ultron by the end of the movie. I would still have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver be in this film and still have Scarlet Witch play a crucial role in taking down Ultron by weakening his adamantium armor. In Bandit's story, Ultron's armor was made of vibranium, but in my story, it's adamantium. Not only that, in Bandit's story, Ultron attacks Washington DC and the entire final fight between the Avengers and Ultron takes place there, so I would still have that as well. But, I would also still have the other heroes from the previous films, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and the others team up with the Avengers to take down Ultron. I would also have a scene like an Avengers Endgame where Strange opens portals so that the other heroes can join in on the fight to help the Avengers with the soundtrack Portals by Alan Silvestri playing in the background. The film would end similarly to Bandit's story with Pepper Potts' consciousness destroying Ultron from inside out, since Ultron took Potts' consciousness from her body so that he can give her a robot body he can control, where she will be free from her fleshy prison. 
Ultron's entire plan in this film, well, in, in Bandit's story at least, that I want to go with, is that he wants to suck out humanity's consciousness and plunge them in robot drone bodies that he wants to control so that uh, he can create a society that is truly peaceful and utopian. I would personally run with that instead of a generic destroy the world plan. However, unlike Bandit's ending, I would have the Avengers go their separate ways and not have the president call for an arrest warrant for Tony and Steve Rogers like in his story. There would be a mid credit scene where Loki, who disguises himself as Thor, gives Thanos the Infinity Gauntlet and in exchange he will leave Asgard alone and not destroy it, and Thanos agrees to the deal. Up next is The Amazing Spider-Man True Colors. This film would introduce the symbiote black suit from the comics, introduce Black Cat played by Felicity Jones, and the Sinister Six as the main villains. And, and Kingpin would hire the Sinister Six to take down Spider-Man, and I'm pretty sure by the time this film comes out, the first season of Daredevil, which I'm already planning to release for this franchise, would also have uh, Wilson Fisk be in prison by the end of the show, but because he's still the Kingpin of crime, he's still pulling the strings from behind bars. I would have the Sinister Six lineup be just like in the original comics with Doc Ock, Vulture, Electro, Sandman, Craven, and Mysterio. This film would be Mysterio's first appearance, uh, and I would have Quentin Beck appear in the previous Amazing Spider-Man movies, but only as a cameo to like tease that he'll become Mysterio eventually. Not only that, I would explain that the Black Symbiote landed on Earth all the way back in the 1990s in a space shuttle by NASA, and Dr. Richard Parker, Peter's father, was working on the symbiote to see if it could cure cancer. Peter would become, would, would break in t into Oscorp after he finds out that the symbiote from his father's files, and it was stored in Oscorp in a vault somewhere. And that's when he encounters Black Cat, and the two are in a rivalry and a relationship from there. After Peter gets the symbiote attached to him, I would put a cameo where he would go visit the Fantastic Four in the Baxter building and have Reed Richards analyze the symbiote for Peter, just like how Reed Richards did in the comics. I would end the movie with Peter defeating the Sinister Six with the help of, hi of the Black Symbiote, but realizes that he went too far when he, say, beats Doc Ock almost to a bloody pulp within an inch of his life. Peter would take off the symbiote in the church tower like in the comics, and I would also have the dream sequence from the comics showing Peter's internal struggle with wanting to take it off. By the end of the film, he ends up doing so, and it passes on to Eddie Brock, thus setting up a sequel with Brock as the main villain as Venom. I'd also forgot to mention that I would also introduce Eddie Brock earlier in the, in the Amazing Spider-Man movies as, as a cameo, and maybe introduce him in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 when he's working for the Daily Bugle, and set him up as Venom later on. Up next is Black Panther 2. The film would have both Ulysses Claw and Namor as the main villains, and it would have Claw teaming up with Namor to take over Wakanda, because both Atlantis and Wakanda have been in a big rivalry for a long time, like in the comics, and have Claw wanting to purge Wakanda of its vibranium for his own doing. I would have Namor sort of become a good guy in the end, by seeing it was a big mistake teaming up with Claw, and work with T'Challa to take him down. By the way, I would actually have Namor actually be Atlantean and not Aztec, like whatever the hell the MCU currently is doing with him. And I would also establish that Namor is a mutant since he was canonically Marvel's first mutant. And next is Captain America the Winter Soldier. The film would have overall the same plot as the 2014 film, but here are some of the differences I would write in. I would have Alexander Pierce actually be the President of the United States and not the Secretary of the World Security Council. And instead of him being played by Robert Redford, he would be played by Till Schweiger, and you can already see where I'm going with this. Winter Soldier would have more screen time and have more of a role in this film, and I would have more scenes of him trying to research and dig up his past and try to find out who he really is. I would have the scene in the, in the overpass be the same, but instead of all three of them being arrested, Steve is the only one who was arrested and Black, and Black Widow and Falcon end up fleeing. I would have Winter Soldier bring Steve personally to the president, and then the president gives him this long monologue about how Hydra believes that the world cannot be trusted with its own freedom. I mean, you get the gist. And then the president's accent slowly changes to a familiar German accent that Steve has heard before and the president takes off his human mask and reveals that he was the Red Skull the whole time. 
Yes, this is how I would have the Red Skull return in this film and reveal to Cap that he infiltrated the United States government to make sure that Project Insight was a success. In the end of the film, it went in the same way, with Falcon rescuing Cap and telling him to put the three motherboards in each helicarrier to stop Project Insight. The film ends with Red Skull imprisoned, Winter Soldier fleeing, and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s reputation being damaged beyond repair. Up next is Thor Journey into Mystery. The film would follow along with Bandit's right of Age of Ultron, with Loki leaving Thor on Niflheim after he is badly injured by Ultron, and with Loki impersonating Thor to be the King of Asgard. The entire film would have Thor figuring out a way to get out of Niflheim to Asgard and stop Loki. The main villains would be Hela, the goddess of death, and the ruler of Niflheim. And I would actually have Hela be Loki's daughter and not Loki's stepsister like whatever the hell uh, Taika Waititi did with Hela in Thor Ragnarok. I would also have Enchantress uh, and her right-hand man Scourge as side villains, though I don't know how they'd fit into the story. Maybe have Enchantress be hired by Loki to make sure that Thor doesn't return. I would end the film with Loki powered by the Odin Force that Odin passed down to him after Odin died, fighting against Thor in Asgard, for who is the rightful leader of Asgard. The victor is obviously Thor, and the film ends with Thor being crowned as the new king of Asgard as his birthright. Up next is The Amazing Spider-Man Nature vs. Nurture. The film would have Eddie Brock slash Venom as the main villain, and I would have Venom be CGI like in the Venom movies, but actually look polished and good. Venom's design would be just like Todd McFarlane's design with the sharp teeth, the spider logo on his chest and back, etc. I would open this film with Spider-Man defeating two throwaway villains from the comics, Rhino and Shocker. They're not the main villains or anything, but just two throwaway characters to start the movie with. Uh, and I would have Eddie Brock's backstory be just like in the comics to make him more down-to-earth and sympathetic, and I would have Venom slowly play mind games with Peter and interfering in his personal life and even putting the lives of his loved ones in jeopardy. The film would end with Peter not only defeating Venom, but taking the symbiote away from him and locking it up in a vault in Oscorp so that it doesn't escape again. Up next is X-Men Dark Phoenix. This film would be based off the Dark Phoenix storyline of the same name and open with the X-Men discovering Jean Grey's body alive and well in a river near New York. And then shortly afterwards, the Phoenix corrupts Jean and she starts to wreak havoc as the Dark Phoenix. The Hellfire Club would be involved in this too, and I would also introduce Emma Frost in this film. I would also introduce two new members of the X-Men with Banshee and Dazzler. I would also have Magneto play a crucial role in this film in helping take down the Dark Phoenix, and I would also introduce Genosha, the island nation of mutants ruled by Magneto, and have this be the film where Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver find out that they are mutants and that Magneto is their father, just like in the comics. I would end this film with Jean Grey being freed from the Phoenix Force and the Phoenix Force explaining that the entire reason it became corrupt was because of the human emotions it experienced from Jean. Because remember, in the comics when the Phoenix was created, it was never made to feel so that human emotions could not corrupt it. I wouldn't have Jean Grey die in this film and instead I would have her live and maybe die again in another MCU film because, well, I'm a sick bastard like that. Not only that, I would have a mid credit scene where the President of the United States announces that after the events of Dark Phoenix, Winter Soldier, Age of Ultron, and so on, he is going to speak with Congress on passing the Superhero Registration Act and setting up a Civil War film that I have planned for this phase. Up next is Ant-Man 3. I would have the film introduce Scott Lang as the new Ant-Man for the MCU moving forward. I would have Hank Pym henceforth in the MCU adopt the Yellow Jacket alter ego he had in the comics. I would have probably also include the abusive side of Hank and Janet's relationship just to add more dimension and reality to their relationship, and maybe even address issues of domestic violence but only for a small bit. I would have the plot of the film be Hank Pym not only ditching his Ant-Man persona, but having Scott Lang steal Hank Pym's uh, Pym Particle technology to help steal money to repay his debts he has to an infamous mob boss who has kidnapped his daughter Cassie. Now, who is this infamous mob boss, you may ask? Well, it's none other than Hammerhead. 
Yes, I'm actually having Hammerhead be the main villain of this film, and I would also introduce Silver Sable as a side villain to team up with Hammerhead, since they both were in a relationship in the comics at one point. So I would have the conflict be Hank and Scott teaming up to save Scott's daughter and taking down Hammerhead and Silver Sable. Up next is Avengers Civil War. Yes, I know the poster I'm showing says Captain America Civil War, but I'm titling it Avengers Civil War because I want this to be an Avengers film and not a Captain America film. This film will be based off the Civil War storyline of the same name and have a story centered around the themes of freedom versus control, human security, government overreach, etc. Basically the kind of themes that would make a libertarian drool. The film would have Team Captain America and Team Iron Man duking it out, and I would have the central conflict of the movie be centered around the Superhero Registration Act. The problem I had with the 2016 Civil War film was that they shoved the Sokovia Accords to the side and had the whole conflict center around Cap aiding and abetting Bucky. Which angered me because the whole film was supposed to be about, about the Sokovia Accords and they just shoved that aside for the sake of Cap aiding Bucky. So in this film, while Bucky is still a member of Team Cap, the conflict won't center around him. Spider-Man would wear the Iron Spider suit he had from the Civil War comic and I would have him briefly defect to Team Cap after realizing that Team Iron Man has went too far. Not only that, I would have Daredevil be in this film and have him be on the side of Team Cap. And I would have Edward Norton's Hulk be a member of Team Cap because it would make sense since he was hunted by the government for the past decade and doesn't want to be in their control under the Registration Act. I would also have a big fight scene w where Hulk and Tony Stark are fighting and Tony Stark is wearing his Hulkbuster armor. And Hulk ends up being defeated and is placed in a cryo, in a cryo chamber cell in the negative zone as punishment. And yes, I would introduce the Negative Zone prison in this film, but instead of it being Tony and Reed Richards' idea, it would be the idea of the United States government. Tony couldn't do anything about it because his hands were tied and the government forced his hand. It never made sense to me that Tony and Reed would do something as horrible as imprison their former comrades in the Negative Zone and slowly deteriorate their psyche. From now on, every questionable action that Team Iron Man took in the Civil War comic would just be the government's idea from then on. I would have the movie end with Captain America dying. Yes, actually dying in this film, and from being shot by Crossbones. I would set the scene basically like this. Crossbones is hired by the president to take down Captain America and aims at him from a sniping position in the middle of Cap and Tony fighting. But Cap decides that he will refuse to fight Tony any longer because the two are just too close as friends. Crossbones shoot Captain America and shoots Captain America in the chest, and wounds him fatally, and Iron Man ends up cradling him in his arms. I would have a scene similar to the comics where uh, Iron Man visits Captain America's dead body in the morgue and explains to him in a sad and heartbreaking monologue about how the fighting between them was never worth it. Considering that Robert Downey Jr. is an excellent actor, I have no doubt he'll be able to pull it off. The film would end with a funeral for Captain America and everyone attending it and paying their respects. But that's not all. The film would have a mid credit scene where the President of the United States who signed the Superhero Registration Act into law talking with a woman over on the phone. And he says something unusual. He says that the plan to divide Earth's mightiest heroes has been successful and they will take over Earth as it is, as it is written in the prophecies. Then the President slowly shapeshifts it to become a scroll, and then the scene cuts to black. Thus setting up a secret invasion movie that I have planned for Phase 3. Up next is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. The film would have the Kree Empire and Ronan the Accuser as the main villains. I would also introduce Mantis in this movie, but I would completely change her character. I would have her backstory be just like in the comics where she is a half French and half Vietnamese young girl who was taken into the care of and trained in martial arts by a Vietnamese monk, who is actually a member of the Kree Empire. She wouldn't be this infantile and naive woman like in Gunn's film, and instead she is a fiery and determined soldier who doesn't take shit from anyone. I would have her defect to the Guardians midway through the movie and have the film end with the Guardians of the Galaxy with the help of the Nova Corps take down Ronan and his Kree Empire. For the record, I would actually have Ronan be a threatening and imposing villain and he wouldn't need the Power Stone and his hammer to be a powerful threat. So yeah, the Power Stone wouldn't appear in this film. 
Not only that, I would also not have a stupid bit where he gets distracted by Star-Lord dancing because it would just be ridiculous that out of all things he would be distracted by, he would be distracted by that. Up next is the final film in Phase 2, Doctor Strange Into the Dark Dimension. I would have this film be based off the storyline from the comics of the same name, and have Doctor Strange and Wong team up alongside Clea, who is Dormammu's niece, to take down Dormammu, who is still planning to take over Earth and the universe. I would still have Clea be played by Charlize Theron, and have both her and Doctor Strange be in a relationship like how they were in the comics. And in the end of the film, they both team up to take down Dormammu, and I would have the movie contain very eerie atmosphere and visuals, since it takes place in the dark dimension, and I want the film to capture how truly dark it really is. First off in Phase 3 is Fantastic Four The Lost Kingdom. I would have the plot of the film be that Namor arrives in New York City and needs the Fantastic Four's help to rescue Atlantis because Atuma, who is the main villain of the film, has taken over Atlantis and needs the Fantastic Four to help overthrow them. The movie would end with Atuma trying to launch a, like an amphibious invasion on New York City, but the Fantastic Four foiling it alongside Namor and help restore the throne of Atlantis back to its rightful king. Up next is Thor Ragnarok. I would not have Taika Waititi direct this film because I hated the original 2017 film he made, so instead, this film would be directed by someone else and it would have a much darker and bleaker tone. It would be a direct adaptation of the Ragnarok storyline from the comics. It would still have Surtur and Hela be the main villains, and I would have them by the end of the film completely obliterate Asgard during Ragnarok. And I would also have Sif and the Warriors 3 die in this film and have them go out in a heroic way, with Thor mourning over their deaths and their demise is what makes him unleash his full power of the Odin Force and defeat both Hela and Surtur. The film would basically feel like a George R. R. Martin kill fest, with so many main characters from the previous films that we know and love dying, and the only main characters that survive in this film are Thor, Loki, Heimdall, and the citizens of Soldiers of Asgard who still survived. That's really about it. The film would end with Thor creating and settling in uh, new Asgard on Scandinavia, but still mourning over how much he has lost. Up next is The Amazing Spider-Man, Sins of Our Fathers. The film would have Harry Osborn as the new Green Goblin as the main villain, and his motive is getting revenge on Spider-Man since he believes he killed his father. The film would have Harry's sanity slowly dripping away bit by bit as he succumbs to the Goblin formula, and in the end of the film, he tries to kill Mary Jane the same way his father did Gwen Stacy, but Spider-Man ends up foiling it and saves MJ, and this helps make up for the fact that he couldn't save Gwen before. Harry would end up dying in the film the same way his father did by his own blade, just to make it more ironic. I would have the main overarching theme of the film be how the actions of both Peter and Harry's parents are affecting their lives, and how differently they ended up turning out. But wait, that's not all. The film would have a mid credit scene where Miles Morales, who does have a cameo in this movie, gets bit by a spider, and the post credit scene would be him telling Peter about his powers and, re and Peter revealing to him that he's Spider-Man. Up next is The Wolverine. The film would be a solo film focused solely on Wolverine, and I would have the plot of the film be that Wolverine is taking a break from the X-Men and is still grieving after the events of Dark Phoenix and Civil War. And I would have the main villain of the film be Dr. Killebrew, and he is being and he is hunting down Logan to, cr to create him to be the perfect soldier and create more refined clone soldiers of him. Killebrew hires Sabretooth, Lady Deathstrike, Omega Red, and Deadpool to hunt him down. I would have Omega Red be one of the villains in this film because I really want this character to get the live action treatment, and this would also be Deadpool's first live action debut in the MCU. He would still be played by Ryan Reynolds because let's just face it here, he's irreplaceable as Deadpool at this point. 
Deadpool would still crack the fourth wall and make jokes about how he's aware and he's in a comic book movie. Y you get the gist. I would have Deadpool defect and be a good guy in the end and help Wolverine fight off the other villains. I would probably have him make a joke where he says, uh, Alright, time to switch sides because the plot requires me to. The film would end with Logan and Deadpool fleeing the, the Weapon X facility on Alkali Lake, and there would be a mid credit scene where Mr. Sinister meets up with uh, Dr. Killebrew and discussing future plans for Wolverine. Up next is Ghost Rider. The film would basically have the same premise as the 2007 film, but it would actually be good and not a train wreck. The film would have Johnny Blaze as the main character, and I would have him be played by Boyd Holbrook. The film would have Blackheart as the main villain, but his design, powers, and backstory would be just like how he was in the comics, and not some fucking Twilight reject like in the 2007 film by Mark Steven Johnson. Mephisto would still be in this movie, and he would be the same one that appeared in, in my Fantastic Four Doom film. Long story short, Blackheart and Mephisto get defeated, and I would have a cool ending sequence where Ghost Rider is riding off into the sunset with Wherever I May Roam by Metallica playing in the background. I would have the movie's soundtrack be classic heavy metal songs, since Johnny Blaze in the comics was a big metalhead. Up next is Avengers Secret Invasion. The film would take place long after the events of the Civil War film, and it would have Iron Man still grieving over Steve and how divided the Avengers have become and the guilt he carries with it. I would have the film still have some of the plot points from the Secret Invasion comics, except the one subplots where they were on the Savage Land. I would have most of the movie be a mystery film about who's a scroll and who is not. And I would actually have the way the scrolls invade Earth actually be secretive, because the problem I had with the Secret Invasion comic is that the way the Skrulls invaded wasn't that secretive, it was just too obvious. As Linkara said, the comic should have just been retitled Avengers Damn Obvious Assault. So yeah, I would still have a scene from the comic where Maria Hill, who is actually a Skrull in my version of the film, frees all of the prisoners from the Negative Zone prison, and the Avengers would have to take them all down. Basically, freeing the Negative Zone prisoners as a distraction. Not only that, I would have this be the movie where Clint Barton drops his Hawkeye persona and becomes Ronan. He was also Ronan in the original storyline, so it would basically be a homage to that. The film would still have a big action scene where the Super Scrolls and the Avengers fight, but I want this film to be more of a mystery thriller rather than to be too focused on action. I would have the film end with a third act, with the final battle being on Washington DC, and have it end in a battle like in the Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon, where the Super Scrolls and the Avengers face off. After the Scrolls are defeated, I would write out that the US Congress repealed the Superhero Registration Act after it was discovered that it was just a strategy set forth by the Scrolls to purposefully divide the Avengers. That's pretty much my pitch for a secret invasion film. I would have the Skrulls invade in a way that is less obvious and more secretive, unlike in the comic. Up next is X-Men 5, The New Mutants. The film would be based off the New Mutants comics of the same name and center around them, but I would still have the original members of the X-Men as supporting characters. And I would have this film not only center around New Mutants, but also other mutants from the comics, and I would also even introduce Quentin Quire in this film, and I would have him be the same character he was in the comics, being an arrogant, narcissistic little twat, and I would have him be played by Jack Gleason. As far as, as who I would have as the main villain, I would probably have Emma Frost and the Hellfire Club be the main villains in this film, and the New Mutants take them down. As for who I would cast for the New Mutants, maybe just the same actors that played them in the 2020 film. That pretty much does it for my pitch for the New Mutants film. Up next is Doctor Strange Triumph and Torment. The film would have Mephisto as the main villain and have Steven and Clea Strange, alongside Doctor Doom, team up to take him down and rescue Doom's mother's soul, Cynthia, and ascend her soul into heaven. The film's story and plot would be based off the comic storyline Triumph and Torment, where in that comic, Strange agrees to team up with Doom to rescue his mother's soul from Mephisto, and I would have this be the movie where Mephisto really gets to shine as being the main villain. 
and have Willem Dafoe give as over the top of a performance as he desires. Up next is The Amazing Spider-Man Criminal Empire. The film would have Kingpin return from prison and hire a new line of villain members of the Sinister Six to take Spider-Man down. The members of the Sinister Six lineup in this film are Rhino, Shocker, Hobgoblin, Scorpion, Doc Ock, and Electro. I would have the film be Miles Morales' introduction as the new Spider-Man and fight alongside Peter to take Kingpin down. I would also have Daredevil be in this movie and have it be a team-up film between Spider-Man and Daredevil to take down Kingpin. The film would end with a big fight scene in Kingpin's tower where both Spider-Man and Daredevil team up to take him down and he goes to prison once again. But Kingpin being Kingpin, he still will try to pull the strings of organized crime from behind bars. So yeah, that's my pitch for this film. A Daredevil Spider-Man crossover with a new line of Sinister Six members, Kingpin as the main villain, and Miles Morales as the new Spider-Man. Up next is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. The film would have Thanos as the main villain, and he would have the same motivations and backstory he did from the comics, then whatever the hell the Russos did with him in the 2018 Infinity War film. Because the problem is that the Russos gave Thanos this overly complicated plan and turned him into this sympathetic benevolent dictator that made him cease to be what he was from the comics. So instead, he's going to be the same how he was in the comics, and I would have his personality be more megalomaniacal and dictatorial like in the bits we saw him in in the 2014 Guardians of the Galaxy film. In this film, I would introduce Lady Death, and I would have both her and Thanos be in a relationship and establish a backstory similar in the comics, and in order to please Lady Death, he would kill his entire race of people on Titan, which is a moon and not a planet in this version, to gain her love. And that he wants to annihilate half the universe just for her. In this movie, I would have Thanos collect three Infinity Stones by the end of the film. The Power Stone, the Reality Stone, and the Mind Stone. I would have him hire the Black Order to try and pry the Soul Stone from Adam Warlock's forehead, but they don't succeed. I would actually have the Black Order in this film be an overpowered, intimidating threat like in the comics because I hated how the 2018 Infinity War film depowered and neutered them since in the comics they were a serious threat. In the comics, just two of the members of the Black Order were, t were able to take down half of the Avengers and especially Wolverine from the X-Men. That's how imposing they were. The film would end with the battered Guardians of the Galaxy fleeing in their ship to Earth to contact the Avengers and Thanos tracking them down. You obviously know where this is gonna lead next. Up next is the big event film y'all have been dying to see from this project of mine. Avengers Infinity War. The film would have the Guardians landing on Avengers headquarters to warn the Avengers of an incoming attack by Thanos on Earth, but it's too late. Thanos attacks new Asgard and takes the Space Stone that Loki hid from him, and I would have Thanos defeat Thor in a fight on new Asgard, and also have Thanos kill Heimdall and, Th and Loki in front of Thor, just to show how much of a menace he is. And then, Thanos attacks Doctor Strange who fled to Kamar Taj to take on Thanos, and half the Avengers would be there with him, while the other half figures out a plan to stop him. I would still have Doctor Strange contain the Time Stone around his neck like in the original MCU film, but have its color be orange like in the comics. And yeah, I forgot to mention all the colors of the Infinity Stones would be how their colors were in the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Long story short, Thanos beats Doctor Strange in a fight and takes the Time Stone from his necklace. Afterwards, Adam Warlock would explain to the Avengers that the Soul Stone can actually resurrect people from the dead, and all of the Avengers decide that they are going to use the stone to resurrect Captain America from the dead. So yeah, I would have a scene like in Zack Snyder's Justice League where Superman was resurrected and it would have Adam Warlock using the power of the Soul Stone to resurrect Captain America, and he comes back to life. And the Avengers explain to our resurrected Steve Rogers everything that happened from then on, and even explain that the Superhero Registration Act was repealed after the events of Secret Invasion, when it was discovered it was purposefully created to divide the Avengers by the Skrulls. I would also have a heartfelt scene where Tony apologizes to Steve and says to him that all the fighting wasn't worth it and he was right all along and Steve forgives him and they hug and become best pals again, yay! 
but that is only the calm before the storm. Shortly after this, Thanos and Adam Warlock will get into a huge Dragon Ball Z type fight, and it would end with Thanos winning and plucking the Soul Stone from his forehead. He then prepares to snap his fingers, but before he can, the Avengers show up and it would be a scene like in the final battle of Avengers Endgame, where Doctor Strange opens portals and several other heroes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we've seen before join in to take Thanos down. Thanos puts his plans to snap his fingers on hold just for a bit and says that he'll just have some fun before snapping his fingers to fight the Avengers and humiliate them. The scene would have him first taking on the original members of the Avengers and beating Hulk in a fistfight, then he would fight the X-Men and I would have him beat all of them too and kill Jean Grey yet again. Yes, I'm having Jean Grey die in this franchise yet again and I'm having Thanos kill her because I'm a sick bastard like that. Then, I would have Thanos take on the Fantastic Four, but he beats all of them as well. Then have him take on the Sorcerers of Kamartage, along with Strange, Clea, and Wong. But they all lose since Thanos has all six stones. Then, I would have him face off against the Guardians of the Galaxy and beat all of them as well. And I would have him seemingly kill Groot. Yes, I would have Groot seemingly die in this film, but come back as baby Groot in the next Avengers film. Then, Thanos beats the last line of heroes left and walks all over their incapacitated bodies. And after he beats all of them, he gets ready to snap his fingers, but just before he does, a battered Captain America steps forward, and it would be just like in the Infinity War comic where he says that as long as one man stands against him, he will never win. Thanos then shatters Captain America's shield with his gauntlet. Then, out of nowhere, Drax comes up from behind Thanos and stabs him in the chest. But Thanos starts to chuckle and Drax asks him what's so funny. And then Thanos says to him, you should have gone for the head and snaps his fingers turning half the universe into dust. Then Thanos kicks Drax aside and opens a portal to escape to Lady Death's realm and uses the Infinity Gauntlet to heal his wound. The film would end the same way with half the universe turning into dust and Lady Death becoming so pleased by this that both her and Thanos' relationship become so much stronger. The film would end with a shot of the remaining Avengers in shock and horror at how much they have lost and the scene fades to black. Yep, that's my pitch for the Infinity War film. No stupid plan to balance half the universe because Thanos wants to save everyone. No slowing down the pacing by having Thor go to Nidavellir uh, to get a new hammer. And it would, ha it would basically be a little darker and have Thanos be a more maniacal version and humiliate the Avengers in a final battle before snapping half the universe. Up next is Ghost Rider, Hellbent and Heavenbound. The film would basically be based off the comic storyline of the same name and have the angel Zadkiel as the main villain. Just like in the comic, the film would have a twist to explain that Zadkiel was the one who was responsible for Johnny Blaze being the spirit of vengeance instead of being the work of the devil. In the comic, Zadkiel was the one who cut a deal with Johnny's girlfriend at the time he made the deal with Mephisto to circumvent the Devil's Deal, thus turning Johnny Blaze into the Spirit of Vengeance. The film would take place long after the events of Infinity War and have Johnny Blaze, who survived the snap in this version, trying to cope with all he lost after, th after the snap. And I would have the film showcase how the world is lost, depressed, and torn apart after the snap. That's pretty much my pitch for this film. It would take place long after Infinity War and add a new twist and retcon Johnny's origin. Up next is the Wolverine Silver Samurai. The film would take place a full five years after the events of Infinity War and have Logan trying to cope with him losing to Thanos and losing half of the X-Men to the snap. I would have the film further showcase the aftermath of the snap and how it affected every character's lives just to showcase how destructive and depressing it was. I would have the Silver Samurai be the main villain in this film and I would not have him be some giant mechanized transformer like whatever the fuck the 2013 Wolverine did with him. I would instead have Harada from the comics who was the original Silver Samurai as the villain and have Yukio from the 2013 film come and recruit Logan to Japan and warn him of Harada's rise to power. And I would have Japan in this movie be torn apart by Thanos' snap, just to showcase how the snap affected everyone globally. 
I would also establish that Logan was trained as a samurai in the past, and have both him and Harada actually go way back and have a long built up rivalry. The film would end with Logan killing Harada and letting his wife Mariko take over the family legacy from then on. That's pretty much my pitch for the Wolverine sequel. It would have the similar plot to the 2013 film, but takes place long after Infinity War and actually have Harada instead of whoever that old man was as the Silver Samurai. But wait, that's not all. There would be a mid credit scene where Janet Van Dyne, who was one of the survivors of the snap in this version, walks up to Logan in the X-Mansion and tells him they have hope to undo what Thanos did, setting up the next Avengers film shortly coming after this. Up next is Avengers Endgame. The film would have the same plot as the original Endgame, but with a few differences. I would have the first 10 minutes of the film take place two months after Thanos snaps his fingers, and the Avengers finding a cosmic power surge on a moon in the solar system that had the same cosmic power surge when Thanos snapped his fingers on Earth. They track it down to Titan, one of Saturn's moons, and the birthplace of Thanos from the comics. Once they get there, they find Thanos along with Mistress Death and notice that Thanos is battered up and broken like how we saw him in the beginning of Endgame. Long story short, he explains that he used the stones to destroy the stones because he knew one day the Avengers would hunt him down and reverse what he did and destroyed them for good. Drax, who survives the snap in this version of Endgame, stabs Thanos in the head and basically just kills him by going for the head like he was supposed to. The film cuts to five years later, and the next 50 minutes of the film before the one hour mark would be the Avengers coping with what they lost and trying to move on, but finding it difficult to do so after how much they lost. I would even have a scene between Spider-Man and Daredevil, who in my version of Endgame survived the snap, stop a few looters during the ruins of New York City, and talk about how it's so hard to move on, and I would even have a scene where they show that Foggy and Karen Page also disappeared in the snap, and this takes a heavy toll on Matt. The rest of the movie would be the same, I would have Scott Lank still trapped in the quantum realm, but I would have him be released by Janet Van Dyne instead of some rat. I would have it that Janet finally found the van after all these years, and when she pushes a few buttons she releases Scott, and he would explain that he was going into the quantum realm to find more samples for Ghost's treatment. But the person who was supposed to pull him out uh, ended up getting snapped anyway, and that person was Michael Pena's character, Luis. The film would still have Scott explaining the whole Quantum Realm thing to the Avengers and still have them traveling back in time to get each of the stones, but here's the difference. I would have the scene where they get all of the stones in a much shorter amount of time, bas basically just to save up the running time, and more of a heist scene like in Ocean's Eleven, and have each scene where they get each Infinity Stone be only about three or four minutes long. I would have a scene where Drax, Rocket, and Nebula travel back in time and knock out Adam Warlock with some sleeping gas or something and then pry the Soul Stone from his head. I would have Captain America take the Space Stone from S.H.I.E.L.D. Headquarters. I would have Black Widow take the Reality Stone from the Collector. I would have Scott Lang sneak into Kamar Taj and take the, the, the Time Stone. I would even have Thor take the Mind Stone from the Grand Master. And finally, I would have Bruce Banner get into a fistfight as the Hulk with a being called the Champion and take the Power Stone from his forehead. Because remember, in the Thanos Quest comics, the champion was the beginning, well, was, was the being from whom Thanos obtained the Power Stone from. After the time heist is finished, I would have the Avengers gather up and put them all together in a new Infinity Gauntlet, but that's not all. Shortly after Hulk snaps his fingers and brings everyone back, Thanos, who in this movie is resurrected by Mistress Death because she's Mistress Death, of course she can raise people from the dead, uh, sends Thanos to the Avengers base along with his resurrected army to take down the Avengers and stop them from undoing the snap. The film would end the same way with everyone who is snapped coming back to life and teaming up to take Thanos down. Iron Man sacrifices himself and turns Thanos and his army into dust. Big funeral for Tony there, Cap returning the stones and passing down the mantle of Captain America to Falcon here, and Cap reuniting with Peggy Carter and the film ending on a heartfelt note. So yeah, that's pretty much my pitch for an Avengers Endgame film, for this phase. 
It would be mostly the same, but I would cut down the time heist to make the runtime shorter, and instead of Thanos from the past, it's Thanos who is resurrected by Mistress Death to stop the Avengers. I would also fix the parts with Professor Hulk and make him less cringe-inducing. And I hope you all really enjoyed my pitch for this film. And finally, the final film in the Phase 3 of my dream MCU plan, The Amazing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The film would be based off the Spider-Verse comics of the same name, and I would have the members of Spider-Verse in this film be the MCU Spider-Man, Miles Morales Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Ham, for comedic purposes, and Spider-Gwen. I would have Spider-Gwen be in this film and have an emotional moment where both her and Peter reunite and have both of them explain that they couldn't save the Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy of their universe and they've been carrying the guilt over it ever since. The film would have Mysterio and Doc Ock as the main villains and I would have them use Quantum Realm technology to open a portal to the multiverse and to release villains from the multiverse to recruit as members of the new Sinister Six. It would be Vulture and Green Goblin from the Spider-Man Noir universe, Kron Stone, who is Miguel O'Hara's half-brother, and Venom from the 2099 universe, and have Carnage from the Spider-Gwen universe uh, be a member of the Sinister Six. I understand that, you know, th since this is also Carnage's first big screen debut and that he is also in a Spider-Man movie, he might be watered down because it will likely be PG-13 or PG. I would still have one of Spider-Man's vicious enemies to get this big screen debut treatment because Carnage is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains and it would really suck if he never got the big screen treatment. Long story short, they're all eventually defeated and every one of them returned to their universe along with their villains. That's pretty much my pitch for a Spider-Verse film. It would suck that we won't be getting the Tom Holland or Tobey Maguire Spider-Man in this film since they won't exist in this timeline. But I did the best I could, and I still think we'd have a great Spider-Verse movie then, nonetheless. Up first in Phase 4 of the MCU is The Incredible Hulk 3. The film's plot would have General Ross becoming the Red Hulk and having him be the main villain. But I would also have Betty Ross become the Red She-Hulk like how she was in the comics. I would also still have She-Hulk, well, the green one, return in this film and fight alongside Banner. The film would have Red Hulk teaming up with the Absorbing Men and the Leader to create a new race of Hulks, but eventually Banner, Jennifer Walters, and Benny Ross end up foiling it in the end. So yeah, that's my pitch for a final Incredible Hulk film for this Little Hulk trilogy. It would have Betty Ross finally becoming Red She-Hulk, and uh, General Ross finally becoming Red Hulk, with Jennifer Walter stashed in in between. Up next is Black Panther 3. The film's plot would be that Doctor Doom attempts to invade the nation of Wakanda to claim its vibranium. I would have Doom want the vibranium to create a new suit of armor for himself so that he'll be truly unstoppable. I would have this be the movie where Black Panther and Storm finally get married like in the comics and have it be built up that they're gonna get married in previous films. I would have Doctor Doom create and wear a suit of Vibranium in the third act, but since Black Panther and the Wakandans are so well versed in how Vibranium works, they figure out a way to f exploit a weakness in his armor and take him down. The film would end with a battered Doom fleeing Wakanda to Latveria, but worst of all, the United Nations agrees to launch sanctions on the country of Latveria and call for Doom's arrest for attacking the sovereign nation of Wakanda. And Doom ends up fleeing out of Latveria to somewhere else secretive. Up next is Ghost Rider Road to Damnation. I would have the film be based off the storyline titled Damnation Johnny Blaze, where the demon Mephisto opens up Hotel Inferno and casts Johnny Blaze back into the netherworld and wrestling the spirit of vengeance in the process. I would have the film make Blaze and the spirit Zarathos that possesses him begin a diatribe about the nature of both play in each other's existence, ultimately realizing two is better than one. Then, I would end the film with Johnny Blaze killing Mephisto and having Blackheart take over the throne and fixing up the mess his father left behind. I would have this film be the final film in the Ghost Rider trilogy and Mephisto ultimately defeated by having Blaze kill him. Up next is Inhumans. 
Yes, I'm actually doing an Inhumans movie, and I'm actually having the Inhumans be a part of the MCU, but not as a TV show, unlike whatever the hell this was supposed to be. The film would have the original line of Inhumans from the comics, and the beginning of the film would explain their origins, what their powers are, and setting up the conflict moving forward. I would have the villain of the film be the supreme intelligence of the Kree Empire, since from what I understand, the supreme intelligence, or Supremer for short, was the one responsible for creating the Inhumans, so it would be a good idea to have the Inhumans rebel and defeat their own creator. I would have the Supreme Intelligence's design be changed and be more akin to what we see here on screen, since I believe it looks better and sleeker overall instead of just some giant floating head in a pickle jar. Up next is The Amazing Spider-Man Legacy. This film would be the final Spider-Man film in the MCU, and it would be based off the Death of Spider-Man comic from the Ultimate Run by Brian Michael Bendis. The film would also have Norman Osborn come back from the dead, and I would explain that the Goblin formula helped heal his wound, and it had fast healing qualities he wasn't aware of. I would have him return in the public and manufacture a thick story about his disappearance that he was kidnapped by the Green Goblin and held prisoner and then he escaped. Not only that, while Norman would still be the leader of the Sinister Six like in the storyline, he would be in his ultimate Green Goblin form from the comics, and he would create a more sophisticated form of the Goblin formula, where he pumps it full of gamma rays and it turns him into a giant hulking monster like in the Ultimate Run. The film would end the same way with Spider-Man being badly wounded after defeating the Sinister Six and killing the Green Goblin and ultimately, no pun intended, succumbing to his wounds. The film would end with a big funeral for Peter Parker and Miles Morales taking on the mantle of Spider-Man from then on. Up next is Logan. My version of Logan for the MCU would be different. Instead of Logan being on the run with Professor X, the X-Men would still be alive, and Logan would then be on a solo mission on his own to track down the remaining scientists behind Weapon X, and the main villain of the film would be Mr. Sinister, and I would still have X-23 be in this film and still have her be played by Daphne Keene. I understand that by the time this film comes out, Daphne would be at least 20 years old, but I would write it that 20 years ago, Weapon X, along with Mr. Sinister's SX Corp, successfully created a clone of Logan with X-23, whom they nicknamed Laura. The film would have Laura breaking away from Weapon X and defecting to Logan in maybe the middle act, and the film would have Logan die similarly in the Death of Wolverine comic, with him being covered in molten adamantium, and the metal hardening causing him to suffocate. The film would end with a funeral for Logan by the X-Men, with Laura being present, and I would end the film with Laura taking on the mantle of Wolverine from then on. Up next is Fantastic Four Galactus. The film would have Galactus and the Silver Surfer be the main villains. I would have Silver Surfer realize that working for Galactus is a bad idea and defects to the, to the Fantastic Four like in the comics. And even though Galactus is an Avengers level threat, I would only have the Fantastic Four beat him instead. As for why the Avengers don't show up, well, I don't know, I would just write it that they're out getting shawarma, and because this is a Fantastic Four film, I don't really want them to intervene. So yeah, that's my pitch for this film. It would finally have Galactus and Silver Surfer as the main villains, like we've been waiting for so long to see. And for the record, Galactus would actually have his classic design from the comics, and not be a giant cloud like whatever the hell Tim's story did with him. Up next is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 4. I would have this film be the final Guardians of the Galaxy film in the MCU, and I would have Michael Korvac as the main villain. Anybody who reads the comics is aware that Kor Korvac is a serious overpowered threat in the comics, and it took the combined powers of both the Avengers and the Guardians to take him down. Just to up the stakes a bit, I'm not gonna have the Avengers in this film. Where are the Avengers during this, you may ask, even though he's a serious galactic threat? Well, I don't know, maybe they're out eating shawarma again, who the fuck knows? This would be strictly a Guardians film, and I would end it on a triumphant note, since it's the last we'll be seeing of them. Up first in Phase 5 is Inhumans 2. 
The film would have Maximus the Mad as the main villain, and I would have his plan to be to dethrone his brother Black Bolt and be the true rightful king of Attilan. Maximus would be a Loki type character because he's always playing tricks up his sleeves and wanting to become the rightful ruler of Attilan, like how Loki wants to be the rightful ruler of Asgard. But not have him be a complete Loki knockoff. The film's third act would be Maximus trying to lead a massive army to enforce a coup on Attilan, but the Inhumans foil it and Maximus is imprisoned. Up next is X-Men Apocalypse. As the title suggests, Apocalypse is the main villain of this film, and I would have him be a CGI character instead of whatever the hell the 2016 Apocalypse film did with him. I would have the members of the Four Horsemen be Gambit, Magneto, Sabretooth, and of course, Archangel. The film would also establish that Mr. Sinister gained his abilities and prolonged his lifespan from Apocalypse back in the 19th century, but Sinister tricked Apocalypse into going back into cryosleep for turning him into a mutant. The film would end with the X-Men defeating Apocalypse in the end by using the celestial technology from his ship against him, and the world becoming so close to annihilation because Apocalypse almost wrecked everything. Up next is Avengers The Kang Dynasty. The film would be based off the storyline of the same name and have Kang as the main villain. I have read and loved the Kang Dynasty comic that the film is based on, and I would write out a few plot points from the comic for time's sake. I would write out the plot point in the comic with the Triune Understanding, and the subplot with Hank Pym battling personifications of his alternate identities in his mind. And I would also write out the subplots with the Deviants from the comic. I would still have the scene from the comic where Kang nukes Washington from space, just to showcase how serious of a threat he is, and also have the scene in the comic where he forces Janet Van Dyne to sign Articles of Surrender. The film would end with Captain America, well, F Falcon as Captain America, defeating Kang in a fistfight the same way Steve Rogers did in the comic, and the film would end with the world not only relieved, not only relieved, but scared that they came so close to annihilation and horrific conquest by Kang. Up next in Phase 5 is Inhumans 3. This film would have the Beyonders from the Infinity storyline as the main villain and have Doctor Doom as the side villain. And it would be the final Inhumans film in this franchise and completing the planned Inhumans trilogy I had for this franchise. The film would have Doctor Doom as a side villain, basically guiding the Beyonders on how to conquer Earth, and the Beyonders would be a very formidable threat for the Inhumans, considering how overpowered they were in the comics. The film would end with the Inhumans stopping an invasion of the Beyonders on Earth, but the film would end with Doctor Doom killing one of the Beyonders and obtaining their power, thus setting up the next film in this final phase, which is... Avengers Secret Wars. The film would have God Emperor Doom as the main villain, and I would have the story of the film be a mixture of the 2015 Secret Wars comic and the original 1980s comic by Jim Shooter. The film would have Doom put all the heroes on Earth on Battleworld and have them fight their way to the top. It would be in like that episode of the 90s Spider-Man cartoon where him and the Avengers fight their way to Doom's kingdom and eventually defeat him and restore the universe by rebooting it. Yes, I would end the film with Doctor Strange and other sorcerers using the power of the Beyonders obtained from Doom to prevent an incursion from happening by causing the two universes for well, Battleworld and Earth-616 to combine together into one single timeline, thus rebooting the entire MCU. This film would not only be the final Avengers film, but also the final MCU film, and have it end it all with this big Secret War storyline. My version of the MCU would last a good 21 years and end in a never-before-imagined-of climactic note. That does it for my dream MCU plan. If Marvel never lost the film rights to their characters, let me know what you all think in the comment section below, and as always, like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.